Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I want to cover the vertical guidance option, uh, where the green controlling line is on the blade and where the red carrot is in conjunction to the blade. I want to explain this in different ways. Uh, on the right side right here where the blade is with the uh, arrow, where you can click on that and change the red carrot from side to side, if you touch and hold and go inside this, there's the vertical guidance option. If you hit this drop down, you can put it on the left, center, right, link to focus, two point. We'll explain those in a sec, but there's an advanced option right here. If you drop this down, there's also overcut protection. To explain all of this to you, I've set the grader up in a scenario here where it's sitting on the side of a slope. You've got the slope up here, you've got the sidewalk that it's sitting on, and then it's got a curb line with the grade over here for the main road. In this scenario, it doesn't matter as much where your red carrot is. That's one thing that always catches people. They think, well, I have to have that in one spot. No, that's just giving you where your elevation is, and it does apply in certain aspects. But what I want to do is in this scenario, I'm cutting the sidewalk. If I turn on my autos right now, you can see that because the green controlling line is sitting up on this pan right here, my cut fill left and my cut fill right is the same based on where it's averaging the blade out in the middle. It's not worried about overcutting into this slope and it's not worried about cutting this pan out right here. The only thing that does matter is as soon as that, that green controlling line touches another grade uh, in the model. So if I slide the blade over, you can see as soon as it hits that slope on the curb, it is going to average that entire blade out to that slope that you can see right there. I'll zoom in. It averages out there. As soon as the blade touches any other portion, it is going to try to average out for that spot right there. So that's why when it's in the middle, it's really, really important to understand what the blade is that these controlling lines are doing. Now, as soon as I bring the blade over to the middle right here, if I were to take it all the way to the slope, it would as, as soon as that green hits that slope, it will try to cut up there. Now you'll notice that the blade is actually sitting inside the slope right there. What I'm gonna do is set a horizontal offset to show you how far in I need to cut. So if I touch and hold on horizontal offset at the top right here, I can go ahead and select my top back of curb, excuse me, my back of walk right here. As soon as I'm there, I know that I wanna cut two feet behind that. You can see that I can change which way that red controlling line is based on that. So now on my main screen, I can run the blade to a specific spot. I can turn my autos on and I can turn my horizontal shift, or excuse me, my, my shift from, side shift from my blade in to hold that. What would happen if I actually went to, let me turn the autos off here. Now over here on the blade on the right side, if I go and touch and hold and go on that, and this advanced options right here, if I drop this down and turn on overcut protection, this is what's going to happen when I hit apply. Now my cut fill is going to tell me that on the left side, I'm touching a zero, but on the right side, I have a fill of a foot. Overcut protection is designed as I slide the blade over. It's constantly telling me, hey, you've got to raise the blade up 185 or whatever it may be to get that all the way to the very top. It's protecting both sides of the cutting edge to make sure. So if I were to turn the autos on at this point, you'll see that overcut protection protects you from just what it's called, accidentally overcutting the slope or overfilling a slope that might cut off to the side. So you gotta be very careful with that because if you were to come in here to try to cut this and that was on, you may get really frustrated. Even if I turn my carrot to the other side, the left side, it doesn't matter. With overcut protection on and autos on, it is trying to get me to that point for both sides. So if I touch and hold there and I turn overcut protection off again, that allows you at this point to turn the autos on and run the blade down until you get to where it averages out where the green controlling line is. So that's where it's very important is understand how to use that. One thing I'm going to show you real quick still on that overcut protection is inside of any of these menus that you open up, there's an I right here at the top right. 
If you touch and hold on, or just touch that, sorry, you can come into this tips option in here. And if you come in here, you can go down and go to and read what each one of these done or does for you. Overcut protection is on for da 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 da. -da. So the also up here at the very top for vertical guidance. If you leave the vertical guidance, the green controlling line in the center, you use it as a default because that averages out the entire blade. It's suited for most tasks. Link to focus, which I'll show you, is better is to build a design grade less than half your blade width, for example, a narrow ditch. So that's why we would move it to one side or not, and I will show you that. And then the two-point option is to average the grade over the blade width on rolling designs. So that's this option right here. If you drop this drop-down bar down, you can put that green controlling line on the left, center, right, link to focus, or two-point. I don't want it on link to focus in this aspect, because if I put it on link to focus and I come out and show you, if I want to leave my carrot on that right side, now that focus point, that green controlling line, followed my carrot where I want to actually follow that, that line with my offline down here. Now I've got a crazy cut and a crazy fill on both sides. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to change that to left. If I put that on the left and come out, the left means that's where the green controlling line is. But the problem now is if I leave that on the left side to gain more of the blade right here and I turn my autos on, it is going to average out the grade of the main road over there and it's going to wipe out the sidewalk right here. So that's why it would be good in this scenario to leave the green controlling line in the middle of the blade because that's where my sidewalk is. You can do custom offsets in from the blade if you needed to. Where that is is in the same uh, blade there. If you touch and hold on it, you can go in here and uh, if it's on the left or linked to focus, you can come in here and do custom insets. So you could do a custom inset for each side or whatever side you've got it on. So if I wanted to come in here and be like, hey, five feet in, I can hit apply and I can bring that in. It just allows you to put that green control line to average out the blade where you need to. Because now I can turn the autos back on, averages out the grade of the sidewalk, and I can still use my carrot over here to understand with my offline how far away I am from there, or I can turn on my auto side shift. So if I let take it to the right there and let off, you can see the auto side shift brings it back to the, to the middle here. So there again, just be very aware of where that green controlling line is, because as soon as it hits that slope, it's going to follow the slope, or if it's going to hit that pan. And with overcut protection off, there again, you can see that I can take that blade corner tip into the design right there and it's not going to follow it until I go into that same op option right there and I turn overcut protection back on. Then it's going to warn me, hey, you've got a fill of a foot. What that would look like if I took the grader over to the side of the road over here on the opposite side where the, the, the sidewalk actually goes off the edge here. Let me just get her over here. Now you can see that I can average the blade out right there and turn the autos on. And as long as overcut protection is off, I can hang the blade all the way out off that edge right there. You can see on the grader here where it's hanging off. Until that green controlling line gets to here, we are good. And I'll show you that one more time. If I go in and take that custom inset off, just put it in the middle, center, and then I slide that blade over. It will freak out as soon as the blade or that green controlling line passes that point right there. It will not work at that point. If I bring it in, boom, everything's good. Autos can run until the blade comes all the way over until it hits that um, pan in the, si in the sidewalk right there. So there it follows the pan. And there, if I come out on the road here, you can see that it averages out that area right there. So this just hopefully explains the difference between green controlling line, where your carrot actually is on the blade right there, and what overcut protection is. And it is all right here in your blade manager. Vertical guidance, overcut protection, and here is also where you edit the blade wear if you need to to match elevations. So.
Hopefully that helped understanding how to control this as you cut different grades at different times of the job. Everyone knows that at different points of the job, it's not always just being cut in once at the exact same time. We've got to be able to overbuild for track grade. We've got to overcut into slopes for concrete guys. You name it, this is how you control it with your blade. And this would be the same with dozer grader, excavator, no matter what it is, earthworks. So thank you once again for watching Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. This one on guidance, options, and overcut protection.